I do. Today we're going to be putting an MSATA drive in an Asus GL551J. It's a bit older of a laptop, um, and the process is a little weird. The whole thing does have to be taken apart, which is unfortunate, but we're going to do it anyways. So, first thing to do, take the battery out, pull on that little switch there. There you go, let me set that aside. And then you have to take out all the screws. Go ahead and take off the back panel, which slides downward like that. Just pop it off. And in here, you can see the hard drive, which uh, if you wanted to replace that with a normal solid state drive, you could. And the wireless card, the RAM here, and then unfortunately, the MSATA slot is right here, which is underneath the rest of the chassis. <clears throat> so to get that off, you'll actually have to undo all the hard drive screws. And before we do that, we'll go ahead and pull out the drive bay, which is held in by this screw here. I'm going to take the hard drive out. There we go. You can on this tab here. Slide it out and then up and out. And just a normal hard drive. And from here, there are a couple more screws. We need to get. Might be kind of harder to see, but there's the two here that were where the disk drive was. All right, and then there are a few more. So there's one here, one here, and one here. And there's actually also one right down here in the corner. Okay, so we're almost ready to open up the chassis, but there are a couple more things we need to remove, which are the antennas here on the, wi well, the wireless LAN card and the little connector right here. You can just pop each of those off. And with the other connector, it's a bit tough to get out, so I just use pliers and very carefully wiggle it out. Like that. Alright, the next thing to do is open up the chassis itself, and I usually use just like a, an old card to get in on the edge somewhere. Go ahead and do that. It's kind of wedged in there, you can just move it around. Play here all sorts of pops. It's just the plastic disconnecting. Alright, and then we can 
kind of pull it up the rest of the way and on most laptops uh, this whole part will come off but on this it's kind of weird it's still hinged on there so you can go ahead and it'll sound really bad like it's popping a bunch but go ahead and move it up like that and it's still on there because of these hinges here on both sides but that's as open as we need it to be and what we're looking for is this right here. Alright, great. Now that we've got it open, we can finally install the MSATA here. And one thing to note on this laptop specifically is that it's very small, like half size MSATA, which is this kind versus the like normal full size or I guess standard size MSATA is this one. You can see it's way too big. So we're gonna go ahead and use this one. Alright, it's very small, but they all install the same way, so all you gotta do is slot it right in there, and then we press it down and screw it in. Alright, and the screw is very small, so we'll see if we can get it in there. like that, it doesn't have to be very tight. And there we go. Now we can go ahead and close it all up and make sure everything works when we turn it back on. And some things may have been disconnected like this cable here, but you can easily trace where those go. Connect them right back in. All right, now we can just put everything back in and screw everything back together. As you can see, I've already put the hard drive and it screws back in, and I've also put the disk drive base screws back in as well. Some final notes on this upgrade are that you will need to disable fast boot in UEFI or the BIOS menu. Otherwise, you'll get a blue screen of death sometimes in Windows 10. Also, if one operating system was already installed on the other drive, you will need to probably switch the default operating system. That depends on which operating system you're already using. But if it's Linux, you might need to configure Grub differently. Or if it's Windows, you'll need to configure the Windows bootloader differently. As far as installing an operating system on this new drive, I didn't have any issues with that. There wasn't a firmware update needed or anything else, and I was just to install it directly. But you might need to use a live boot system, so like Linux on a flash drive or Windows on a flash drive to load in to make any configuration changes. I hope that this was able to help some people out. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.